All right. Uh, I want to take the next couple of minutes and just talk to you guys a little bit about forecasting electricity demand. Uh, but first, economics at the University of Michigan. And my interests include all things natural resources and conservation. Um, a bit about the motivation of this project. Uh, electricity is extremely costly to produce and impossible to store efficiently. Uh, so it's really important that we only generate just as much as we need. So to match this supply with public demand, I built a series of machine learning models to forecast hourly energy consumption. Uh, using these forecasting tools will allow us to better allocate resources and shift transmission. A um, little bit about the data here. Uh, all of the data was taken from the US Energy Information Administration. Um, and it's pretty simple. Really, it's just a timestamp and then the number of megawatt hours of electricity demanded for that hour. Um, so these records on the EIA website uh, begin in July of 2015 and are updated hourly. Sorry, frozen here, it looks like. There we go. Um, taking a look at the data graphically, uh, you can see in blue, these are the actual hourly energy demands. Um, and then in orange, we have that mean demand kind of cutting across it. Um, when we aggregate uh, week by week, uh, you can kind of pick up on these trends that we're seeing. Uh, so we see a big spike in the summer and then a smaller spike in the winter. And another way of visualizing this, uh, if we look at the distribution of the data um, in these summer months, you can see that we peak, uh, then fall off in both the spring and the fall. And then we do have a, a small gain again in electricity consumption in those winter months when it gets cold and we need to heat our homes again. Um, when we zoom in and take a look at a single month, you can see another cyclical trend. Uh, we tend to use more energy, more electricity during the day. Makes sense, we have our lights on, we're working, those kind of things. Uh, and then it falls off in the early morning hours. Uh, and you can see that here. So um, in the afternoon to evening, we're peaking. Uh, and then in the early morning hours here, we reach a minimum of uh, electricity use. Uh, as far as predicting, I'm gonna be using two basic model types. Uh, the first is a gradient boosted regressor, and the second is a recurrent neural network. Um, and to evaluate how well these are doing, I'm going to be using something called mean absolute percent error, or MAPE. And just so that we have some sort of baseline measurement, uh, when we just predict based on the mean, um, mean electricity usage, uh, that MAPE score hovers around 19%. So first, let's take a look at the gradient boosted regressor. Uh, in blue here, you have the actual uh, megawatt hours used uh, for 2020, starting in March, uh, going to uh, March of 2021. And then overlaid, you have the predictions from the model. Uh, you can see it does a fairly good job of capturing the overall trend, uh, but it does struggle a little bit when we're looking at where we have these peaks and valleys uh, in electricity consumption. But generally speaking, that's okay. Uh, when we're looking at a, a year long um, time frame, it's all right. We really just want to look at uh, the range of possible values so that we can make business decisions based on that. Um, when we want to look uh, more closely, we're gonna use the recurrent neural network. And you can see here that the orange predictions really do a great job um, of mapping the actual demand. And you can see, uh, that NAPE score down here has improved pretty significantly over our baseline. Uh, so to summarize, both models that we tested do significantly better than our baseline prediction. Uh, and we are actually gonna be using the XGBoost gradient boosted regressor and that recurrent neural network uh, moving forward into production. So here I just have a couple of screenshots of a very simple web application that I built so that uh, you as the user can access these models and get predictions from them. Um, the homepage just has a drop down menu where you can select the region of interest um, and then it will load the data. So here we're predicting for the next year uh, into 2022 um, for the mid-Atlantic region. And then it also shows uh, the next 24 hours of um, 
what we anticipate that demand to be. So with that, I would like to open it up for any questions you may have.